basically going in on the teeny corners of half the leg, and I'm doing the side and the rest of the leg, and kind of a, a wider pattern. Okay, so I'm going to do that again. 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 Spray the rest out in here. Pull back the lever. I don't know if you can see the mist rising up. It's kind of like cleaning out the product or separating it. I actually, it has a little sponge in here and it fell out, so I have to put it back in. But you'll see this mist anyway. I'm not sure if it's catching on video. Okay, and I'm just going to go in and do a little clean, make sure my nozzle isn't getting all jacked up. And I just pulled back the lever. Since this gun came out, I love it. It's super quiet, super fast. Um, and if you don't, if you haven't seen my other video on the Dynair equipment, it actually, you can fit any of your Dynair guns in here. Now, I don't know about other brands um, because I have only Dynair guns, but um, the compressor just releases like that. And then you push this down and just slide it in like that. Ta -da! So we're ready to go. So now I'm going to go in with a black and I just want to do the very edge of the corner just to give it some definition like a liner and I'll go into here a little bit. But keep in mind this is a really quick look to show you how you can do your eye makeup really fast and use some colors. And so this isn't about getting perfect lines with my airbrush. I feel like that's a losing battle and yes it can be done but I like a more blurred out look and I'm also doing this because this is a quick less than nine minute full face that I'm doing. You can go more into your corner if you want. You work with the shape of your eye. And if you're wondering why I'm being really quiet, it's like five in the morning and I'm doing this video. So, got lots to do and trying to get lots done. So you can see we've created some depth. Voila. So let's put the final touches on this eye. I'm just gonna clean out the black. Always make sure your gun is clean before you put your next color in or it can be a hot mess. Once again, I'm just keeping that gun really clean. So I like to put a little solution in it and then kind of let it um, gurgle backwards and then clean it out again. And like I said, I use these pointed Q-tips to clean the tips, always pulling back the lever so you don't damage the needle. And then I also clean inside so I can get in. And it's just like a little extra step to keep my equipment really clean. It works for me. Um, it doesn't work for everyone else, and some people don't even think to do it, what have you, but um, I am big on keeping my equipment super clean. It just prevents a lot of problems later on, and while you're working, especially if you're doing like a bunch of people in a row. When I went to Vegas, I did seven people over the course of two days, and it was a lot of work, and you've gotta keep your equipment really good, as well as every day. You don't wanna leave makeup in here and let it clog, because it then you won't be able to use it. And then if you take care of your equipment and do these little steps, you'll find that you can use this every day, and you don't have to work twice as hard to clean equipment. Anyway, okay, so we're gonna go in and do the eyebrows. And 
I've grown in my eyebrows because I've just kind of given up on finding someone to do them. So I decided to grow them in and I'm penciling and I'm airbrushing. Today I'm just going to pencil. Because I'm doing a strong eye, I want a softer eyebrow. I'm just following the natural curve and you can see I've just filled it in with tiny little strokes. And that will last me all day. I really don't have to do much with these pencils. And it's a different look when I airbrush it and do, as well as when I do um, this with the powder, the stick with the powder. So there's so many ways you can do your eyebrows. And I base this off of what I'm doing in the day, how much time I have, um, and what kind of look I want. Like if I was going out at night, I might do an airbrushed eyebrow because I know I can get it a little heavier. And, but I have tricky eyebrows. They have to be brushed in. And like I said, I'm growing them out. So there's parts that are not perfectly, you know, shaped. And so that's just what I'm doing because I got tired of having my eyebrows ripped off and having these skinny little eyebrows. And yet I have a strong jaw, so it didn't really work. So anyway, now I'm going in with my liquid liner. And I'm just gonna do the inner corner, just like that, and just blend it in with the line that I did with airbrush. I like a sharp line, and yes, you can do it with airbrush, but I choose not to because I'm doing a quick morning routine, and this is a fast way to get your points in. And yes, airbrush is fast, but we do whatever works for us for the time. So do whatever works for you. I'm just showing you alternate ways of getting your makeup on. And this is a way of showing you that airbrush isn't just for professionals. It's for everyone. And these are just little tips and tricks to make it easy for depending on where you are in your routine. So now I'm gonna take this really cool multi-stick by Wet n Wild. And these you can use on your lips, your cheeks, under your eyes, what have you, eyeshadow. And I'm incorporating it with my eye airbrush makeup because I'm showing you how you can use multiple products. Don't limit yourself and feel you only have to use airbrush. If you're not quite there, either with your budget or your skill level, you can mix your products. Um, the benefits of airbrush outweigh the benefits of regular makeup. But there's always, as a makeup enthusiast, you see these little colors and things and you want to try them out. And it's great to stay on trend with what is coming out in the industry, as well as it's just fun. So I love this brownie kind of color. It was unusual. I hadn't seen it. And I wanted to be able to do this quickly at 5 a.m. in the morning. So I'm going to go underneath. Okay, so I got a little bit more green on this side. So I'm just going to take the end of a Q-tip. And so if you get a little airbrush in places you don't want it, just take your I'm taking the wide end of this pointed Q-tip. I got these at Sally's and I'll put the link down below. And I'm just brushing it out so it's even. And I'm going in with this. And these are so soft and easy to blend in. So I'm just blending it in with my... So we're doing kind of a green brown cat eye look. Super cool. All right, now we're gonna go in with our lashes. I've got these very natural looking lashes that I got off eBay. I've actually used all of them on clients and myself, so these are my last pair. I have a link for a video I did on that um, and where you can get them. They're super inexpensive. They claim to be um, mink, mink lashes, but um, for the price, I highly doubt it. And then there was a whole thing I posted on a vintage group about these lashes and people went off because they were mink and farming and all that. Um, these are just like a synthetic as far as I know. They're not, and you know, people use the words for marketing. It's just a soft, thin lash, okay? So everybody calm down. And I'm gonna put that right here. Don't worry about the white, it'll dry clear. If you're new to lashes. I like lashes. Um, you don't have to do this for your makeup routine. I could have just put mascara on and been done, but it's a habit. And I like it. And it'll pop in the video. And being that I do so much makeup for camera, it's just a habit that I want to pop in the video uh, on the cell phone when I do pictures for the cover. Um, you don't have to do this. Um, if you're new to makeup, if it's very early like right now, but if you do, 
I'll put the link below for these lashes. And they're super natural, as you can see. And they just add a little bit, and it just kind of complements the makeup. There you go. And we'll lose, use mascara. I'll use L'Oreal again. Um, to seal our fake inner bottoms so they don't look split, and I do that a lot for clients in the camera. And I like to do it for every day because it's just a finishing, it's those little touches that make your look, your makeup look professional and finished. I hope I'm not bending down too much, you can see all this. All right, now I could take this stick and draw and do a blush, but I'm not going to today because we're doing a quick video. We're gonna do blush. Time, we're doing good. It's only been 10 minutes. I think it's been less. And there's a lot of people who think, you know, using powders with your airbrush is defeating the point of airbrush, but it's really all about your schedule, your budget, and what you got going on. So I love this orange. I didn't have it in an airbrush color as well. Like I said, I'm showing you how you can incorporate products and just get started with airbrush if you're new to it, as well as use up the products you have and have fun with it. It's makeup. And my goal with my clients and with my looks every day is just to use whatever works. Okay, and now we're gonna go in. You can still see a bit of the white glue. And it just opens up the eye and you can see a little bit more white. You can pretty much see where your eye lashes and that it's powdered. So you just kinda, I just stroke it and just blend it in. And for fun, I'm going to do a burgundy color on the bottom lash, just to give it a bit of depth and something different. Now, I have this white primer by L'Oreal, and this actually works really well. So if you're doing colored mascaras, you just do a little of this. You don't have to. I find uh, the colors really pick up well. Because I have black lashes, it helps, but I don't worry about it popping that much. It's great though if you're doing like a turquoise or a red or something brighter. So I just put a little white, make sure it's clean. And then I've got this beautiful dark burgundy, which I thought would go well with the brown and the green. And I'm just gently going along my bottom lash. And you can see how it kind of fills it in. Now we're going to do this one. Okay. And then if you have any fall, up, fall off, go in with the Q-tip. I just got a little a biggie. My eyelash, my bottom lashes are a little funny on this side, so they look like almost too short or crushed. So I'm careful, I might let them dry and then do it again. Now you can see the liner is drying or the glue has dried and because we put the eyelashes on, it's great for covering any gaps, but now I gotta go in and freshen up the liner because it's a little bit uneven. 